Alex from Antoni. We decided to make a little short video clip to better explain the problems with the main bearings and the rod bearings in that 65 motor. We know there have been a lot of questions and concerns and people wanting us to post some pictures, but I think doing it this way will help a little better and uh, better explain to you guys what's going on in these motors. As an example, we're going to show you guys the rods and the bearings the main bearings and the rod bearings out of uh, Paul Walker's track car. We tracked this car for two years straight with no issues. After two years of tracking, we decided that we were going to take the motor apart and build a stage three and move on to a higher class. Well, we luckily did that just in time. When the car got here after its final track event, we started up the car and we heard some abnormal ticking noise from the bottom end of the motor. For us, it sounded kind of like a rod knock or some kind of rod bearing problem. So we went ahead and we pulled out the motor and we started taking everything apart. While we pulled everything out, we noticed the pistons were perfectly fine, no detonation signs, nothing like that. And we started to pull off the caps for the rods. As we did that, the last two rods in the back, cylinder four and eight, when we pulled off the caps, the rod bearings fell straight out and because of lack of lubrication and the heat that it causes and the friction what's going on in these motors is it's unevenly wearing all the bearings starting from the back mainly sometimes it's in the middle sometimes it's in the back it's uh, more of a friction issue and a lubrication issue and because of the heat what's going on is the rod itself it starts to stretch and as you can see over here, a bearing is supposed to go in there and fit nice and tight. Because of the heat and the friction, it's caused the rod to stretch. And at this point, this bearing is just moving in and out of this rod. And it's not supposed to be doing this at all, whatsoever. Now, if you notice, this is one of them. This is another one right here, which has the same problem. And as you can see, the uneven wear and the stress marks all over the rod bearing. And we have the same issue on this one, same loose rod bearing inside the rod. This rod has also stretched itself. We're lucky to pull this motor apart in time because if we didn't, we could have had a lot bigger issues than what we see over here. Over here, we can show you a little bit of the wear on the main bearings. This is one of the main bearings. You could also see the uneven wear and the heat, what it's caused because of the lack of lubric lubrication and so forth. So these are some of the problems with the S65 motor. Now we've tried to do everything possible to solve these problems in our stage 3 projects and do everything we can so we won't have issues like this. Now as everybody remembers about a year ago or so we had a failure of a motor and uh, everybody knows whose motor that was. It's Drew's motor and we had a failure where the rod shot through the side of the block. Now what we've done is we've taken apart Drew's motor we just haven't had time to make a video so we're doing it now and we will show you guys the main bearings and the rod bearings that uh, the rod bearing actually the rod that came out of Drew's motor um, so let's go ahead and look at that as you can see over here these are the bearings that the main bearings that were in Drew's motor and this is exactly what they look like so basically everyone knows that this lack of lubrication is what ends up causing the motor to seize so if you could look these are the top part and this is actually the bottom journals right here and this motor obviously had some kind of lubrication problem and some kind of oil pump failure and it caused it to actually seize and the end result was basically shooting out the rod and the piston through the side of the block. You can see the rod over here broken in half and the bearing of this rod is nowhere to be found obviously because it's seized and uh, just got washed away with everything else that fell out of the engine. This is the rod and the other half of the rod that broke out and this is the piston. Now everybody was saying that it was caused by detonation and everything else so what we did is we took all of Drew's pistons and except for the broken one we took all the all of Drew's pistons and we laid them out over here and we basically took one and we cleaned it completely off so everybody could see that 
There's no sign of detonation in this motor whatsoever. And here's another piston which is cleaned a little less than the one I showed you previously. And this is actually one of the other pistons that we cleaned a little more and just to show you the build up on it and this is one that has not been touched whatsoever so everybody could see there's no kind of you know detonation or anything in this motor so this motor popping had nothing to do with the supercharger kit or bat tuning or any kind of detonation problems this is also the wrist pin that came out of Drew's car was laying in a half cracked oil pump well oil, oil pan sorry about that and here's a little bit of the block that you guys can see the rod actually came out and ripped through the top of the block where the throttle motors go and it actually came out and ripped through the side of the cylinder bore and you can see it's all broken all throughout here and inside the cylinder bore all broken all throughout there and also came along to the other side and broke the whole side of the block on that side also well I hope this gives you guys a little bit of uh, a better explanation of what we've experienced with these motors um, people have seen these happening in the factory motors also you know there's factory motors letting loose a lot we've been hearing more and more and BMW all they do is replace the whole motor but right now this is what we've experienced with these motors and we've learned a lot about them about clearances and everything else for the crank and um, we've tried to focus on fixing all the problems in our stage 3 motors and hopefully everything we've learned about these motors will pay off and help the community and I hope explaining everything in this video helped all your questions Thank you so much and we're hoping to build a lot more stage 3 motors and a lot more high horsepower M3s for you guys and trying to do our best to provide you guys with as much information as possible. Thank you.